All right, well, we just decided to sit down with Jason Shear, uh, the 76 car, and uh, pretty much everybody knows Jason. He's been around for a while. We're just sitting here talking, trying to put together his stats on King of the Hammers. And Which he, I didn't know. Even he didn't know, so he had to look at his own website. So we think we kind of got it. And uh, Jason offered me a beer, so I'm going to indulge. So pop that open. Cheers. Um, cheers. So another year, 2023, down at King of the Hammers, and uh, we took a look at your stats. And when was your first year racing King of the Hammers, Jason? So I officially drove it my first time in 2009, but in 2008, I was Jeff Mello's co-driver, and that was when I knew this was the sport I wanted to do. So I interviewed uh, Yoder, and Yoder's first year was 2008, as well as Tom Waze's first year, um, and you know, the year after the OG 12, and they were sure to make sure that I knew that Jason Shear did not race in 08. Uh, so basically, they raced a little bit before you. But in fairness, you did race. I did race, but no, no, no. I also was the last person up at the campfire in 2008 at the night before the race. Yoder tapped out before me. Yeah, and I so don't... I got you on that one, Kev. And you didn't you didn't really know me at that point, but that's the first time I met you. I came down for the 08 King of the Hammers and I actually it was really windy after that race that night and I came into your trailer yep. and you poured me a special uh, <laughs> at about midnight after the race. Um, so you co-drove in 08 with Jeff Mello. I did. And it was <laughs> it, it, it the race was really fun. All the shenanigans that took place between like breaking my transmission in the truck on the way down and then having to get a friend to bring a trailer down so we could get my truck back and riding there wasn't enough seats in his truck so jeff and i sat on the truck with the oh, broken the transmission trailer. in the trailer all the way home yeah <laughs> and then it was cold i mean Yo, you remember how cold it was so we yeah. left the truck running transmission was blown but we didn't care we wanted to stay warm so we're driving down i-5 and we get a phone call from the guys on in the truck that was telling us and they're like hey can you turn your auto headlights on they came right in our rear window oh, <laughs> i was man. like yeah we'll get right on that so we had uh, it was just a, a great trip so you came out in 09 uh, and that was the first time we saw the 76 car yep and uh did you did you win it in 09 we won it as a rookie but it was so it was so fun i i knew i loved it right like i love dirt bike riding and I really always loved Baja, but I knew it was like out of our like pay range. And there was no way. And you had been way. doing a lot of rock crawling before that, right? Was, Competition rock crawling. I was, but and I started off as just a Jeep guy going on the trails, right? Like yeah. uh, 12 years old, I went on Barrett Lake my first time, and I knew that my first car I wanted was to be able to go on the trails, and so I, you know, built up a CJ5, turned and, into and a CJ6. And you're another Northern California guy uh, yep. from Danville, and so you're back, you know, you're wheeling as the Rubicon, Fort Ice, Barrett Lake. Um, like real Root grass trail. roots, rock yep. crawling, taking it slow, CJ stuff. You are a CJ guy. Taking it slow, but we had something wrong with us because we we just wanted to wheel. So like we'd go to Rubicon and we'd get there Friday night after school, and uh, it was in high school, right? So I'd like yeah. go to high school, you know, go to school. And you drive your jeeps up. We drive our jeep up there, and then Saturday we drive through the whole trail. And we drive all the way right back to the spillway. And on Sunday, we drive the whole trail again and then drive home. And it was like, we, we couldn't get enough of it. You know, we loved it from all the way back then. So I use a little bit of a term with Webb about you being quote unquote, a technician. And when it comes to going fast on the rocks, going slow on the rocks, like it is learned, like it's a skill, right? And so you have a certain kind of skill set, And so you started honing in your skills and you won it in 09 as a rookie. And Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe when you came across the finish line, was it the front diff that was completely gone? It was just a ring and pinion just banging around in a hole? So that happened a few years after. That was a few years later. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I actually think it was the rear diff. I drove in on was, front wheel drive. I think drive. it was the rear diff. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, was, that was in 2011. Um, Casey was my co-driver. Oh, nice. And uh, I left him at Backdoor. That was kind of one of those. Oh, that's like, right. I remember. Yeah, because I was like, we got winched up Backdoor and Shannon was in front of us. He passed us while we were winching. And I'm like, oh, I got to catch Shannon. I felt bad, but I left Casey and tried to catch Shannon. And uh, at some point lost the rear, those, one of those high nine deals like let yeah, go. Yeah, back then, the, with nobody, we didn't know anything about Gearworks 10s, tube work stuff. I don't think uh, it existed. I turn, you know, I, you know, maybe it did. It was huh? like before all of it, so you so know. So that was a true high nine. It wasn't true a high mega nine. high nine. Nope. It was a true high nine. Nope. 
It's so. actually in my CJ. You still have same, the same one that we prepped the yeah. car with. I took it out and put it yeah. in there. And you have a CJ6. <laughs> you have a badass CJ6. So it's me being favorite. a CJ guy, that's where my roots are. I love the fact that you still have the CJ. You take it out, you wheel it, and it is a rad rig. Still my favorite car. Yep. You know? I mean, you got all these toys, and that's still your favorite car. Yep, yep. So fast forward, you started racing every year. Your crew got bigger, your investment got bigger, your, the technology got better. Um, last year you had what I would have thought was one of the top IFS cars out there. And uh, we got some people walking through, no big deal. So last year you had one of the top IFS cars out there. I think the design... Uh, he's filming. It's okay. That's all right. <laughs> no worries. So, We're in Hammertown. That's yeah, it's no it big deal. So what people don't understand about your race car and about Jason Shear is that you're not just paying somebody to build your car, getting in it and driving it. You're, you are literally involved, in my opinion, in every aspect of the race car. And I don't think people know that. So you're, you're, you're right, but I don't want to take away from the guys that actually do it. I do pay guys to build the they car. They do the work. But they're, they're, they're equally or if not better just badass fabricators and I, I have been able to lean on the sharpest minds I think in our industry to get the designs right and to get the ideas right and then listen to their input and, and you stuff. worked a lot with Dan Trout and Loved Dan Trout is Trout. an amazing builder yep. and uh, he, right he does <laughs> Dan does a killer job um, he kind of quit building cars and there, there wasn't like a falling out or anything no, he just no, moved he just, on yeah and uh, now uh, Keith from Get Bent has helped you. And, and Dan said from day one, if you're going to find someone else, Keith's the guy. Go to Keith. And I, I didn't know him, and They're I met him. They're both from up in our area. They're both amazing <laughs> fabricators. I mean, yeah, and, and Keith's turned into an amazing designer um, and a good friend, you know? And that's the thing about the whole sport that's so cool is, like, you know, all the people that you end up working with, it's, it turns into a giant family because you put so many hours and so much effort into all the little pieces. So, you know, these things don't just come together by accident. And I know some people do. They just say, hey, I want this car. And they, they you know, when's it going to be ready kind of thing. I'm in the design stage all the time because I have ideas. And, and we don't always know if they're right, but I'm willing to try them a little bit. And this is what I meant about how you're involved in every aspect of the car. I realized that Everybody's got a real job. We go to work, we're married, we've got kids, we've got sports, we're flying here, flying there. Like, life is crazy, right? Always. But I remember four or five years ago just having a conversation with you about um, scrub radius, Ackerman angle, you know, how much toe changes in full cycle of the suspension, how much camber changes in full cycle of the suspension. And um, I know that you totally geek out on that. You love every aspect of engineering. And I like trying to see if we're in the right direction. And then if you make the change and you don't like it, and maybe that's the part that I like. So like, I love building it, but as a driver, I love feeling the differences. And, and I've liked it since I was a little kid when it was like, I wanted to you know, change the shackles and see if the longer shackles did something to and I, Every little detail I was so involved in. I messed with everything. Uh, what's yeah. the shackle reversal feel like over shackles in the front? What if you put this much angle it's on better, it? better by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then fast forward, you take your IFS, you put 10 degrees of caster in it. You go drive it and you go, no, let's go back to five. And then you know, you, you mess with all kinds of different pivot points and then you log that information in your brain. Like when you guys go and get in the car, you are, you feel every little aspect of that car. And, and you, you have to adapt to it a little bit, but like, it's so cool because, you know, with Keith on this last car, Keith Beam, that we just built here, I knew I had stuff right, but I didn't know exactly how to duplicate it because it's so difficult and we took the time to put my old car, the Dan Trout built by hand, back into SolidWorks backwards. Yeah, and that's so, what you're doing, you're involved, you and Keith and doing all the design of the car fully in SolidWorks. This is the first one I've ever done that is 100% in SolidWorks. I mean, yeah. down to, you know, Matt Taylor did seat mounts and, you know, every little detail is just a, it's a duplicatable car, which is kind of cool. Um, I mean, the tubes literally have numbers yeah, so, on them. So now you could cut every piece and part out. You yeah. break a corner, you do something, you fix it. Yep. Um, and so we'll back up a little bit. You had really good success with this car and maybe nobody, not everybody realizes it, but you retired the car from last year and we talked about your stats and it was like 
was it three wins, two seconds. Um, we just read it off. But anyway, just unbelievable KOH stats, right? Yeah. And the car was still, you know, a second and, place last year. Yeah. Like, has the ability to go out there and win this year, last year's car. But there was, so, there was a couple little tweaks he wanted to make. He wanted to get this over, uh, let Keith kind of... Um, work on it and show show give you his input and then you put more input in and so you're coming this year with a brand new car new car same problems it's a week before four or five <laughs> days before the race and we're still deciding which transmission we should run because one of them's leaking here and one of them's doing this and you're like ah but in reality yeah it was a tough call and that car that that trout built has some incredible stats that are different it has eight for eight front row starts I mean, that's just an insane stat, you know, like, I don't think that people realize how hard it is to get on the front row of qualifying against a hundred plus cars that are all going for that spot and for it to do it eight years in a row. I mean, it's literally eight for eight on the front row. You're like, how do you get rid of that car is what everyone asks me. And I I'm mean, like, it's, it's, I don't know. And I don't know if the new car has that sprint in it where it's a sprint car where it'll I mean, do that only fast. Time, only time will tell, right? <clears throat> well, I it's mean, probably not quite there yet. You, and you don't, you don't build a new car to make it the same as the old one. You build right. it to, to do some different stuff. Right. And yeah, you're not sure if it's there. You ha you did bring it down to the lake bed, you know, a, a month or so ago. Um, you have done some testing. It's not right out of the box, out onto the course, you know. Yeah. Um, I think that the uh, Gomez has basically backed it out of the trailer. Like after they weren't even sure if they were going to race it last year, and then, you know, some well, of this racing is luck, right? For for a new car to get to the finish. Yeah, and they've built a few of those, and they're they're a great team. Like, there's some guys out there that know what they're doing, and they can build a new car. And as long as they're not stepping way outside the box, you know, they're they're going to have good success, even in something brand new. And, and this is where we'll move into to your team, right? So, you look at Gomez's. You know, every year they have. I mean, Joe Thompson's a great designer. They have so many people backing them. All these guys that are amazing fabricators, amazing prep guys. They check every bolt, they, they cross every T, they dot every I, and guess what? That's what you guys do too. And I think you, your race team um, has been like that for years. Your race team has been that team that every minute is set on the schedule, every guy has his job, everyone is appreciated from you know the guy that checks one tire pressure to the guy that you know puts the pistons in the motor, right? That's um, true. Everybody's an equal part of your team. And every time I see you guys on the lake bed, it impresses me, you know, how your guys come together for you. You know, the thing that's so cool about this team that's maybe different is that we've all, it's all the same guys. And there's a reason that that works. We've added in some new guys over time and grown, but all the same original guys are there. And I know this sounds kind of weird. We weren't that great, but we all have learned every year and through every up and down that's why i don't even call them failures they're just like learning lessons for yeah. our team and we've gotten smarter and better the teams communicate you know better one thing we've never had is any like weird drama like because it's just like hey this is super fun and a lot we of put a lot of have, effort a lot of into it drama right it's not my career it's just a fun race these for guys us. are taking a week and a half week two weeks work. out of their all their regular lives to come help you do this oh, right? i know it's, and i know you take care of them really well you make sure they got a good spot i mean your guys' spot in Hammertown, how many RVs do you think you have in here? Well, I rented eight. You rented eight RVs? I rented eight, and I have my own. <laughs> how many people do you believe are on your... I mean, do you even know how many people are on your team, quote-unquote? Yeah, I mean... You? <laughs> I just had to buy shirts for all of them. So yeah, you, you bought the shirts. I mean, it's got to be thirty. Oh yeah, right? we got we've got thirty guys, and and you know every one of them has an important role, and I think that's what you know I respect each one of them's role and what they do, and you know they also respect that there's some guys that have familiarity with each part on the car that have been with it and so they give them the space in there too that they're not sitting there you know holding the tire down and drinking a beer watching them do it when they know their job is on saturday race day to make sure they have their jack set up and ready at pit two to to swap a tire when i come by so they're we've we've got a good balance going on how everything's kind of lined out and uh and you know the team's just gotten better and better about you know knowing stuff and like i i mean i say this all the time you don't really know what you don't know but once we learn it these guys take it in and they don't let it like go as a negative that they were doing it wrong the other way they're like okay cool this is the better practice and and the best part is you know 
and believe that everyone on your team is doing what they need to do and you know what they're doing and you appreciate it and they're putting in the hard work. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. they're and, great. And it shows. And, you know, a portion of racing King of the Hammers is luck. A portion is having a badass race car. A huge portion is having the right crew to support you and get you out there and get you to start, you know, first eight times, you know? Um, so then there is that thing where... Uh, you and Jason Berger have to go out there and do what you do, and, and you guys uh, seem to be the great uh, pair, I believe. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good team that way. Like he and I in the car. I mean, he's, you know him. He's a he's a coach, right? I mean, that's I what mean, he is. He, he's mean, a coach he's, for a living, you yes, know. And he's, and you know, he's a, he owns a CrossFit gym, and he coaches people. And he had a regular job and he fell in love with coaching because he wanted to see people progress and to see them and he pushes them so jason's your coach burger's your coach he's the in-car coach it, i mean it, it says on the gps executive domestic partner exclusive it, domestic partner it, but he's my coach in the car not you know? only is he telling you race conditions you know where to turn where to go fast where the g outs are but he's a on a mental coaching oh, level with you it's right? insane yeah I when mean, to push and you know push harder we got this pass them now all the way back to okay reel it in we're getting a little excited you know and so it's good to have that balance so one of the things that i like when i watch you drive and i've i've been in that race a bunch of times i, I raced with yoder and i hate to say it but you you laugh us pretty you know quite a bit yeah, right you saved so our you've saved us we too. Love to see hey you, you got us by. one of our wins it's, if, if there's you know? any chance that that i can you know, we're in a spot and you're coming through. I'll get out of the car. I'll help you get through. And well, that's you, what a lot of this... You did that, remember? We, I did. We I, had a guy that was... You know, we were on lap three. And there was guys on their second lap. And one of them that we followed up a hill rolled over. And we knew that was going to be a longer recovery than the guy that was winching. And you ran up and helped the guy that was winching so that you could help us winch that line. And we could go on and, and keep our lead. Otherwise, you know, we were getting out of the car in that time. And I, that might have saved the race. You might have won the race It might have, but that happens all the time. That's just not me. It's this Northern California group of yep. racers, which we got a high echelon of, of racers no. from Northern California. We always seem to help each other and root for each other and, and try and push shoot through. But I get to see you drive. I've seen you drive on, on the course is what I'm getting at. And there's people that are just wide open throttle guys. There's people that are rock crawler guys that just finesse and work their way up. And Webb used to be a rock crawler guy. Yep. And now he's trying to learn, you know, uh, under the master Yoda yourself. He's got- He's support. getting it. He, he's got your engine and everything. But, but what I'm seeing is when you come through, you keep momentum, you keep wheel speed. So you're using the inertia of the tires going around. You're, you're feathering the throttle. You're, you're blurping that front end like a dirt bike. Um, as you go through the trails and because of your style of driving it's way less um, it's not hard on the car it's less abusive it's less abusive to the car and you're always going to run into those issues where something happens that you're not prepared for but yeah. that in my opinion is what's put you up on the podium so, so many times is your style of driving and and it can't be argued against you know well it's it's definitely hard to keep yourself i mean what shannon does you know when he gets on the pipe and spins the tires it is tempting you know i mean everyone wants to do it yeah exactly. and it's so fun if that's, you're just like whoop, 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 whoop. and that's everybody's way out the first they get in trouble and they gas it and and i think you do exactly the opposite yeah in, in we try to situations. save it and and it's even you know it's it's a bummer because it's a little bit conservative you it know is. and so we we have an approach that is like hey i think i can make it up the waterfall at sledge right now but it's better to winch it. Well, so, and this is this is where the team comes in, and this is where Berger comes in, is Berger knows exactly how many seconds it takes to get out and winch a certain and spot. And he might be the very best guy here. Right, and that. he will literally throw a chart down and go, okay, we're going to lose 15 seconds to winch here, but we're going to make it up over here, and what we're, what we're not going to do is we're not going to lose two minutes or 20 minutes because we break something, right? right? And so that's, that's constantly computing, you know, what the risk is, what the reward is, and I've seen you guys do that. So technically you are not as exciting to watch I know. on camera. I know. Right? Yeah, it's kind of the Jimmy Johnson lull you into another win. There you go. You yeah. know, but you know, you can't argue with like that style of finishing the race has high high probability that you're gonna get yourself into some wins. We also tried to build this new car based on that theory that as long as we have something, we've got something for the end. At, yeah. at the end of it that we can go 
120 well, through I mean, the lake bed to get back. Attrition is a big deal, right? right. So oh, yeah. you could you could sprint yep. and then you gotta think about old Mr. Luck a little more. But if you run a calculated race and then save it for the end and sprint. I, I mean, I, I think that's a, a... And I don't want to jinx it, but it's one of those things where it's like, well, if you did take the back up and didn't bend the drive line, and then you've got that 50 miles, 40 miles back to the finish line at the end of the rocks, and you can go 100 plus, yeah. and the other guy's like, my drive line's vibrating so bad I can only go 60, and you're going to you're gonna catch them, that's you know? And so deal. you have to have the car at the end for that sprint. Well, we could go on and on. Um, I, I just came from Webb's pit over there, and... Uh, He's my dark horse. Webb uh, has he's, nothing but good things to say about oh, you. Same. He's, you know, um, he's the only guy I ever let copy the car. You know, we let him build the, you know, Trout the same and, exact and car. He can, and he appreciates it, right? And That's cool. this is this is the camaraderie of people from the same area. All of us, the racers up in Northern California, this group of guys that stick together. The fact that you, you know, Webb could never come down here and race without you, and he said it straight up. He goes, yeah. all the help that Jason's given me, there isn't a chance I would be on this lake bed with this race car. And you know, that is a big deal. That like it's But he's a brother that would do anything for anybody. He like would that, you and know, he and so it's the right it. person to do it for and I yeah. can't tell you how much he appreciates it. And That's I, cool. and and you know, this kind of thing in Ultra Four racing and this group of guys, everybody here, you know, Shannon, the the whole group of guys that have been here from the beginning, everybody is ready to toss a diff this way or a spare transmission or yeah. you know things like that um and so i appreciate it and i appreciate you being a part don't of don't you think it started from when we used to go on rubicon and somebody would break and you hop out and be what do you need I'm you know help you what, the guy in front of you when you're on the rubicon you're actually waiting for somebody to break yeah because that's the fun part right? pop out have a beer talk Stop, to your buddies have a beer, see if you can help fix it yep. see if you can give them some parts you know here's my address mail that back to me when yep. you get home um, so yeah, that's kind of where it's come full circle, right? Totally. Um, and it has got to the point where, like, you have to commit yourself way more than spending a weekend at the Rubicon. Like, your commitment <laughs> is all year long, and especially building a brand new race car, right? Yeah, and um, and qualifying is the scariest day of the year, and the race is the most fun day of the year. You know, and yeah. it's like they're only a few days apart, but man, it's a the place is hard on you. This is a hard a hard week, you know. There's well, a lot of work too. There's a lot of running and working on the car and yeah it's a good time well it's a good uh, time. i'll leave it at that i hope to see you qualify in a, in a great spot but i know if top you, 15 i'll be happy yep yeah, yep absolutely so i want to ask you one question um and the question is this so uh who would be your first choice um if, if you didn't have the chance to win win king of the hammers out of all the other racers who would who would you like to see come across that finish line in first place <laughs> That's a tough question. I really think that that Waze is due. I really feel like he's got the skill. He's got the car. He's he's the so person he's, he's I'd like. On a lot of discipline. I have liked. I have wanted Tom to win this race. I've wanted Tom to win this race for so long, and I feel like I, he I got, got stolen chills. from him once chills. when he really didn't do anything wrong. But I understand you have to live by the sword on the on the yep. technicalities. Yeah. But. I would like to see him get one. I think it's an, you know, easy. I think Webb will get into that pace and get there. Like, yeah, I think he's going to get there. I think he has years ahead of him. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think for ways and maybe myself, there's a limited timeline of how long we can Absolutely. take this time. This isn't the Baja 1000 that you can race you at 65 years it, old. This is I, rough. I sat down with Ways up at the shop and we had a, a really good talk. And the first time I ever came to the Hammers was with Ways, right? And he's come a long way. He, he went from a kamikaze driver to getting into a really nice car. And he spent the last, like, this is discipline. He is disciplining himself. He is, he is you know, he's de definitely got himself in the position if, if everything falls in place. And, and I'm glad that you would appreciate it if, if he came across oh, uh, man. the finish line in first place. Because I would too. But it's always anybody's race, right? It's anybody's race. Lots, lots of stuff plays out here, and the last few years you've watched the leader have issues almost across the board, and it's just they just keep falling off, and it's a new person. Just, and yeah. you know, I also think it would be pretty cool if Bailey Campbell could win. You know, I think that she's she's got the skill set, and uh, it'd be good for the sport. That would be you awesome. Know? So there's a few yeah. there's a few people I'd like to see get wins out there, but it, it's. It's a hundred percent. I think Tom Ways deserves to win this race, and I watched him wheel up Thor's today, 
he's got it right now. He's he's dialed. Well, well, you've you've been dirt bike riding with Tom Ways. Mm-hmm. I have too, and uh, Ways a lot drives. The <laughs> We've dirt done bike. a lot. He drives of dirt, dirt bike, bike you know, <laughs> like the race car, right? And but I think that's pretty cool because it's just finessing yeah. that front end around, you know. So, <laughs> well. I know that uh, you have a crazy busy schedule. I no, can't I'm believe you even to... let us uh, sit down and oh, talk whatever. to you. So I, I appreciate you taking this time. I know we're in the middle of the pits and people are walking by interrupting us, but thanks Welcome for to uh, the hammers, phones right? ringing you know, <laughs> and everything else. So thanks for doing that. Heck and yeah. uh, I look forward to seeing you after the race. Jason. All right. Well, hey, I got to say this to you before you go, um, that your shop, the way you run it, is it's the best fabricating off-road shop around, period. And I've watched you run that business now for... 20 years. Yeah. Is it really 20 it's years? Been t- this God. year has been 20 years, yeah. That's crazy. But and you've done an amazing job with it. Well, thank and you. And I take all my stuff there when I need something done. And, uh, you know, it's been... I'm proud of you for doing such a great job at it because everything that you've done has stayed at that level with the right customer service, the right quality of builds. And, and I really think that, like, I recommend people, you know it, they probably call all the time. And, and, and say, I'm hey. not trying to do these interviews. No, to but I'm, say I'm proud of you WFO. as a friend. I'm, yeah, I'm, and, yeah, and I'm proud of you as a friend too on what you guys are doing. So I, I appreciate that. That, oh, yeah. that is a big deal. Thank you very much. And, uh, you know, I just love the sport, love, love what we do, love this industry and all these people. And uh, I just want to see people go out there and peel out, go fast. I'm ready to go back on Rubicon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, you let's can, go. <laughs> well, you know what? Five more days and you yeah, can relax. Let's go. So, you know. All right. All I'm right. ready for the summer. Yep. Thanks, brother. Thanks, Jason. Oh, yeah. See ya. All right.